G'day folks, it's Rob here and in today's video I'm going to be walking you through step by step how this new aquaponics system was put together. Just quickly before we hook into the build side of this video folks, I wanted to let you know this isn't the system I intended to build at the start. I was actually planning on creating a Frankenstein system using many different grow bed techniques just to trial them all out in one system to see how we go. Now unfortunately, or rather I should say more fortunately, we ended up purchasing a farm halfway through this build. So I've just stuck with two media beds for the time being and a dual root zone over the back, which you will see in this video. For you folks who want to see those other grow beds, they will be coming to the channel once we move to the farm. So if you want notification of those videos once they appear on the channel, all you need to do is hit that subscribe button and then jump on over to the bell icon and fingers crossed YouTube will give you a notification as soon as those videos are uploaded down the track. Now we're all caught up, I suppose the best place to start is with setting up the fish tank. Now the tank we're using for the fish tank is one I purchased years ago from a chap that had it set up in a backyard aquaculture system and as a result it comes with a few extra holes. So as you can see in this tank we already have four holes. We have a large one at the top and we have three small ones at the bottom. The one at the very bottom there is an outlet for the solids waste. Paul had this plumbed up as a dual drain system and that water went straight out to his radial flow settler. The second hole up from the base was actually plugged when I purchased the system from Paul. And the third one was the inlet, which actually had a venturi on the outside that helped rotate the water and also aerate it at the same time. And the large hole at the top was a 40 mil one, which basically acted as a skimmer to take the clean water out into the moving bed bioreactor that he was running. This tank here hadn't been used before, so I needed to drill out the 40 mil hole into a 50 mil one to take my, the drain fittings I want to use. That is the... It is, double check, yes it is, a 64 millimeter or two and a half inch hole and that's what you need for the um, inch and a half or 40 mil uni seals and the larger 50 mil uni seals, both the drain and the pressure uni seals take the three inch or 76 mil saw. So luckily with this type of hole saw, there's enough thread on there to be able to throw, I'll throw, uh, screw that one in. So that hole saw fits in there nicely and will act as a guide as this one start to spin. These walls here too, they're a nice, oh, they're probably about six mil. Uh, the minimum wall thickness for uni seals is three millimeters. So this six millimeter uh, wall is more than enough for this uh, inside edge of the uni seal itself. So one more check of the camera settings and I'm gonna drill a hole. <laughs> Because of the thickness of this wall as well, being six mil, over six mil, quarter of an inch, I can run this blade forward the whole way through with an IBC. I'd start the pilot hole off first and then run the saw backwards, otherwise it's gonna grab your uh, plastic and rip it. So here we go. So I've just got this little deburring tool. You can use the edge of a uh, craft knife if you want but just excuse my wrist, it just goes around like that and chops off any, any bits of this swarf that may compromise the seal of the uni seal in the hole itself. Uh, the, the holes, by the way, have normally a two millimeter tolerance uh, either way, uh, but I find you, a tighter hole, the better the seal, especially with things like um, IBCs. This one here, we can work from the same side and just go around the inside. This tank's going to have to come out and get all that swarf collected that's fallen in there. There we go. Now I'll pop the uni seal in. And we'll have a nice watertight seal. As easy as that. So in this tank here, I'm using the drain work from the old aquaponic system, the two tank system. They use the other two tanks like that. Going to need a bit of adjustment down the bottom here to cut it out. I'll cut it off in for the right height for the inlet into the radial flow settler. Now the base work underneath the radial flow settler and the moving bed bioreactor, that's nice and level. So I know where this is sitting. So what I want to do is just uh, install this basically, just a dry run installation so I can work out the level, uh, how far down basically this drain work here. I need to cut it for the double elbows that will be running into the settler. So the easiest way to do that, I suppose, is just do a dry run um, with the fittings. And it helps if you use an end cap. Otherwise you're sort of, um, hurting your hands a bit, so there we go, we got her in. Now it's just a matter of wiggling it around. 
which I'll use this pipe for once I get the end cap off. Now we just use this to get it in the rest of the way. Give it a bit of a wiggle. And there we go. And just to show you on that side there, we have more than enough pipe to put in the coupling and the top bit of pipe for the solids lifting outlet. So the drain work is now in and I could, if I wanted to, work out what the levels are there to drill the holes for the radial flow settler. But before I do that, I think I might actually take the top off. I already have a video on how I've cut these guys up to make a radial flow settler, so I won't go through that here. You can check out that link down in the description. But just a bit of a rough idea on what I'm doing is I'm trying to match up this groove here with the side profile of the drum itself. So after we chop it off, we can flip it over and the um, exposed bit of drum here will fit nicely within that groove, just so it's a nice secure seal, basically just chop and flip the top of this. So I started off by marking out a rough line, then drilling a pilot hole for the jigsaw and then just used the jigsaw to remove the top. I forgot to mention before, this has had hospital uh, detergent in it. So yeah, nothing too toxic, can be hosed out. The top here, I did go off track in a couple of places, but nothing too drastic. And you can actually see the abnormal molding style of these barrels here. They tend to be fatter in some places than others, but the lid fits on nicely. I could probably trim it down and get it to fit a little bit more snugly, but I think that will do. So I'm just going to use this off cut of eight inch pipe just to mark the hole. And we're going to sort that out from the top. And again, all I'm going to do is drill a hole to start off the um, jigsaw and zap that round. So just flip this lid over, put him on and in goes the radial flow settler. And these little bolts here stop the settler from going all the way through. There you have it. Easy peasy. Now all I've got to do is the inlet and the drain out to the moving bed bioreactor. Because I'm reusing the stilling well from the other radial flow settler, I know I need the hole for the inlet to be 37 centimeters, which is roughly around about 14 and a half inches from the base. So we can go and mark it pretty much all there and also draw on the tape while I'm at it. So this one I'm just going to drill in situ here. And uh, put a lock on the drill, I think. There you go, that doesn't happen often, but <laughs> I should have locked it in, I think. Wombat Robert. So I'm just going to um, tidy this up with the deburring tool. And these these uh, tank walls, these drum walls are nice and thick, so no no problems running a uni seal through these. So this drum here is going to get pretty much all the same treatment as the other one did yesterday. Hey buddy, you might want to move. And that lid fits on there perfectly. I'll move him over here. So we can work out where the pipe that joins these two barrels go. I'm thinking I want the um, exit pipe to be down from the top, just to allow for any backup that may occur. I don't think it will, but I'm thinking if we drill there, that's going to give us roughly two and a half centimeters is there. So the top of the pipe will be there and the base will be roughly round about there. So the easiest way to mark these out is from the base. And that hole is roughly being drilled at 70 or 760 mil, which is a tad under 30 inches. And on this one here, there we go, that is 760 millimeters. And on the other end, the outlet, I'm going to do pretty much all the same thing, but I might drill the two holes first. There we go. And again, that lock doesn't work too well on this one. Just a bit of a heads up, these things, because they're molded, you have a seam on either side. So the seam on this one is just here. So I place the mark, it's about 30 mm off to one side, but it's easy enough just to come over here and say I'm going to drill there 
on the seam and that means just on the other side here we can do exactly the same thing coming up roughly 76 mil there it is 76 mil from the seam and that's it there that's where we drill and we know that those two holes will be directly opposite each other so we have an inlet and an outlet hopefully we won't get stuff all over the place again might actually use my noggin and drill this one from the inside and that way all the swarfle most of the swarfle stay on the inside there we go and on this one here i'm going to do exactly the same thing so i'm just going to start the pilot hole on this side then we'll go to the inside and we'll drill it out from the inside and catch all that swarf sometimes i can use my noggin and the blade stayed on again and just to clean these guys up again i'm just going to use the deburring tool on the same on the inside these barrels are just ready now for their base drains to go in and a bleed off line this one here will be going roughly there on the radial flow settler we'll get to that today we'll also be using this cuff to join these two barrels together and installing these guys which is what i need the glue for and time permitting we'll end up getting this drain plumbed into the radial flow settler uh, just a bit of a quick heads up i've just added a module to the guide that looks at a few ideas on making these guys not only that how to use the glue to glue these bits and pieces together and also a um, option where you can yeah, just fit them together and so you can reuse the parts later but that makes them water and air tight so check that out if you have the guide so this is the mocked up bleed off line for the radial flow settler we won't worry about that now uh, what we will set up is this one here this is the base drain for all the muck from the radial flow settler so what we need to do is work out at what height we need to drill the hole down the bottom there for the uni seal first off is to measure the outside diameter of this pipe you're gonna to have to trust me it is roughly 34 millimeters so i know that um, it's 17 millimeters to the center of this pipe from the top edge there next we pop the drain into the drum situate it where it's going to be roughly mark the top there so now i can measure up from there to a mark on the rim and that gives me 705 millimeters or roughly 27 and three quarter inches by the look of it so marking it on the outside and drilling from the outside is a lot easier so we're coming down seven 705 millimeters which is just there now the diameter of the pipe is 34 millimeters so to drill a hole in the center of that pipe i had to come down half which is 17 millimeters so i marked that and now we're ready to drill out the uniseal hole so i'm using a one inch or 25 millimeter pipe here so i need the same uniseal now the holes for these require a 44 millimeter or inch and three quarter hole and easy enough just to zap it straight through and we put the lock on the drill again there we go fairly easy just clean up the outside and the inside using a deburra away we go so i've used the same process to mark out and drill the drain for the moving bed bioreactor there we go nice smooth hole so the two drain holes are right for the uni seals and pipe work i just need to do a drain off line here it's pretty much all this here with an added snorkel on the inside and what that will do is that will take out the majority of the water probably down to around about here in the radial flow settler deliver it into the sump so when we clean it we're only removing this much dirty water so this one here i've already worked out needs to be this high so roughly around about there if i am correct yep a little bit lower that is where i need to drill one thing i would like to point out that these little bumps with the uni seals don't matter at all whereas you know a normal fitting you would have issues with little lumps and bumps like that creating a nice watertight seal but yeah not a worry in the world for these uni seals i'm just going to drill this one in situ but we'll put this tray here to try and catch all the swarf pretty easy really there we go well that didn't catch much but i'll tidy it up later these barrels now have all the holes drilled and are pretty much all right to go I will give them one more flush out with the hose uh, just to make sure all that conditioner is out of there and I might try to trim down some of these fat lips that are just stopping the um, lids from sitting properly as well I might do that first now as for putting this pipe on here 
Well, um, I've decided that it's going to be a pretty easy job, really. I'll come over and show you. I'll grab my clipboard, actually. So what I've done is literally a back of the envelope um, calculations. I've got two identical uh, twin 45s fitting, 45 degree fittings here, because in Australia we don't have the nice curved 90 degrees that some folks do around the world in this style of pipe. So what I've basically done is worked out how far the pipe goes into these fittings, and then the distance between the end of there and the start of the pipe in the next, and done a couple of calculations and worked out I need roughly around about 700 meters, meters, millimeters of pipe or 70 centimeters. So I'm just gonna cut it there. I'm actually going to do it up under the house in the big saw, just because it's a lot faster and gives me a nice even cut. And on the end of that, on the other end, we're going to have this fitting here. That will end up going here and running through that wall there, and there'll be another one on the other side as the upflow. Now, this pipework here, uh, once that's installed, and I know roughly where I need to cut here, I will be coming across here and cutting off a section, and then I will be gluing this onto the base, and that top will have one of the rubber cuffs that join it together. That way I don't need this height to be absolutely perfect. Pretty easy. Uh, to, before I do that though, what I thought I would do is set up at least this radial flow filter just with the pipe out the top and these ones here, because once I get that pipe work through and connected onto the fish tank, it's going to be a little bit ornery to work with. Then I can do the uh, moving bed bio later. So to begin with, we'll put in the draw off line, which basically takes the bulk of the clean water out to the sump tank, just using my little um, PVC shears here. And just cutting off a section it's roughly around about 60 mil long and what i've just done is just taken the edge off the corner there to make it easier to push through and of course we need a uni seal so the uni seal goes in like this and i'm going to use just another a pressure fitting here just to push it through so i'll just poison the end of this pipe using the water in the drum from the clean out and we will try and push it through it's fairly easy, give it a bit of a wiggle. There we go. And that gives us enough pipe on both sides so we can attach our fittings. And that pipe down there will end about there and we'll draw out the bulk of the clean water so we're not wasting a lot when we clean the settler. Uh, now the bottom fitting. Now this bottom fitting is just a bit of an extension uh, just so I don't really need to um, know the exact length of the pipe work. So anyway, um, we'll get this one ready to go in. Actually, no, it feels like that one's right to go in. Grab a uni seal though, grab some water from inside and pop the uni seal in down the bottom. Might just turn this one over and give him a go this way. There we go. And we just need a little bit for the um, pump fitting that will be glued to the outside. That should be enough. And there we have it. And while I'm here, I'm just going to Attach that drain fitting as well, so I don't have to keep worrying about it. Get it out of the way. So that's all in neatly. Now we can get this line in here, cut up under the house. Before I do that, I'll quickly install the drain pipe into the top of the radial flow settler. So we're right to go on that last uni seal now. And just to show you, I have popped in a section of timber inside just to brace the barrel open so that uni seal doesn't push through. I have marked in from the end roughly 210 millimeters or eight inches, just so I know when this comes through the uni seal, I know it's in as far as it needs to go. So we'll pop this on its side and I'll just grab some lubrication from the other barrel. So these longer lengths of pipe do make it a little bit easier to push in. There we go, I think we got the start of it. There we go. So we can take this timber out now. We'll try and keep moving this in until we see that black line, which is just about there. I think that's far enough. And just to show you, this fitting goes on here. And that's pretty much, well, pretty close to the center of the radial flow settler. So first off this morning, we're gluing up the drain bits and pieces for the settler and the bioreactor, and also the overflow for the fish tank. The shower was passed by the time the drains were all glued up, and I moved on down to the radial flow settler and glued the fitting on to the intake pipe that took the waste from the fish tank into the radial flow settler. 
After that was finished, I nipped around the other side and glued on the valve to the drain fitting that takes all the waste out of the radial flow settler. And then it was time to move on to connecting the fish tank to the radial flow settler itself. Rightio folks, you might be able to tell we've got a bit of a problem here if you can see that level. But that is the amount of space I have to put one of these cuffs. And uh, never fear though, because I am the king of scrounging and saving. So I have loads of pipe left over and it's easy enough for me, actually we'll do this on here, to swap over this top section just by undoing the valve itself, taking off this fitting here, popping on this one here, adding a o-ring to help make the um, seal watertight and pop on the valve again. So we're not going to get the valve handle all the way around to the front, but I'm fine with that. And just um, open it off to the side. It'll mean it won't be in the walkway, so that's probably a good thing. So just try and balance that on there. That looks roughly level there, so I have more than enough room to put this cuff on here. I might as well mark this pipe here for cutting. And we might take it off there. So then all I need to do, once we've cut that off, just glue a little bit of pipe in there and we should be right to go. So I will take this up to the saw under the house. Actually, I can take the whole thing up and chop it off. So there we go. Nice shorter pipe. And now all we need to do, I think this is the right, I've basically measured in 30 mils and the difference and everything. And I think, you put the level up the right way. Yeah, when those two are touching like that, we're pretty much well level. So I know that this pipe will go in a little bit further when we glue it. So there's no drama there. We'll glue this one in now. First of all, I should probably make sure that is dry because we just had another shower. Prime this lower section here. It's pretty easy to see which section you've primed because it basically cleans the pipe. Now the glue. So I've had the uh, RAF or Royal Australian Air Force planes flying over all morning. Hopefully it doesn't get too loud there. Push this down. And basically hold for a little while. Now, fit on the cuff. Just like to undo these screws all the way. Pretty easy to work on though. Even though they're designed for a smaller pipe. I think that's pretty much all it. I'll work him on this one. And needs to come up a fair way, but I already knew that. It does help if you lubricate them a bit as well. So what we've done is we've got to, given it a little bit of an incline on this side here, just to allow for any settling of the tank. I can always come back and adjust this anyway, so it's no huge drama. Now I'll just tighten these guys up. Might tighten them up around that side so they don't grab on anyone as they walk by. As I previously mentioned, I'm not working on a flat level plane here, so there is a little bit of um, skew iffiness. And as you can see, these rubber cuffs allow for a little bit of flex in the actual uh, pipe itself. It's actually canted off a little bit to the right down there. So that's another uh, reason I like using these guys. Everything doesn't have to meet up perfectly. Now we're going to get on to plumbing the radial flow settler to the moving bed bioreactor. Just a bit of a tip about preparing pipe for the uni seals. There's a link to my website that goes through it in more depth. But basically what you want to do with these larger ones is create a bit of a large bevel around the edge. Just helps to get it started off. And on these smaller ones, I don't know if you can make it off. It doesn't have to be as pronounced. I find just as long as you take off that sharp um, rim, anything from a half inch, which is 15 mil, up to about 32 mil, which is inch and a quarter, can be pretty much all started off with just a small little nick off that sharp edge there. Don't forget to check out my page for a more in-depth explanation and also pick up a couple of uni seals if you're um, in the market for some while you're there. So I've got a section of timber in there and I've lubed up the uni seal with a little bit of dishwashing liquid and got the end cap on again. Hopefully it'll start off fairly easy. Through we go. Now this one here needs to have a fitting on the inside so it needs at least 30 mil coming through. And I think that is pretty much all it. So because we've got that section of pipe in there, I'm just going to hang it over the edge there. 
And I've also grabbed just a little bit more dishwashing detergent. Pop that there, put my brace timber inside. This one here is a bit longer because it needs to uh, reach over into the sump tank and should be fairly easy to start off because it's got a um, larger bevel on it. And again, we just want about 30 mil or an inch and a quarter on the inside, just enough to take a fitting. And last but not least, the drain valve for the base of the moving bed bio, and that just goes in easy as. Now we'll um, set these up in situ. So now we'll disconnect these guys before we put any drain fittings in. So these rubber cuffs again, pretty easy to put on. There we go, that's one side. And now the next side, there we go. And it's as easy as just doing up the clamps and we're right to go. I dare say we're gonna get some water in this system today. Next, we add on the bleed off valve assembly I made earlier this morning. And it's very easy, just wrap the pipe with some Teflon tape, push the fitting on, zap a hole through it, and then screw in a 316 stainless steel screw, and Bob's your uncle. The next jobby on the cards was to plumb up the internal pipe work for the radial flow settler bleed off line. I used Teflon tape around the pipe, pushed it on, drilled a hole through the fitting and the pipe and put a 316 stainless steel screw in there to create an air and watertight seal. And then after that, we moved on to the moving bed bioreactor and I pretty much will use the same method to attach the little drain fitting down the bottom there. That is if you can see past my balding head. And then that was pretty much all it. So there we go, folks, she's all plumbed up. Now we just got to look after this drain and just to show you the lids now fit nice and firmly after I trimmed off those fatter bits on the inside. Now the drain system here is going to be pretty basic. I'll just pull my mock up apart. We have a twin glued 45 that's been reclaimed off another system. So what I'll end up doing is wrapping this with Teflon and screwing it on. But we're just going to do a quick test today and that goes on there and we have a 45 that comes down here you can spin that round a bit make sure it's all nice and tight and this bit of pipe delivers the water down into the sump the tanks drums and sump are being filled so we're just checking for leaks pretty much for now so as you can see we've just got a makeshift inlet here and also a makeshift solids lifting outlet i just wanted it to um, grab the water from the bottom uh, just in case any little bits of solid do fall out in there, just helps to bring them along. From there, we have the pipe work going into the radial flow settler. It is holding up fine, no leaks there whatsoever. Just a little bit of a bucket lid over the top of this. And the radial flow settler isn't set up yet. Um, as I said in an earlier video, I think, um, stilling well from the existing system will come down here because we're saving all the pennies we can. Don't want to spend on stuff I don't have to. And the water from there, watertight through the uni seal and that little cuff there into the moving bed biofilter, which also too has no pipe work at the moment. So we're going to leave the radial flow settler and the moving bed bioreactor builds there, folks. We'll come back to them later. And that's because the parts I need to finish the system are in the current system up the top with the fish in it. So we'll move them down once the fish come later on. I do hope you're enjoying the presentation so far and for you folks who are new to aquaponics and you're getting interested by what you've seen so far, I wanted to let you know that I do have a backyard aquaponics beginner's guide available. It's an online interactive guide and a lot of the stuff that I've learned over the years I've popped into this guide. Everything from what is aquaponics, how to cycle a system and the chemistry involved, down to what plants grow best in aquaponics and also a couple of little interesting builds like the canister filter, the radial flow settler and also the drain fittings I've mentioned earlier so do check that out if you're interested $19.95 US and if you use the code full build you will get $5 off or well, the first five people who use the code will get $5 off so that's enough of me spruiking my wares back to the build at this point in the build I thought it would be a better idea if I had a larger sump so I decided to move the sump from the existing system up underneath the deck down to the new one now, before I could move the sump, I had to clean out the grow bed that was sitting on top of it. All that clay was just put off to one side so it could be used in the grow beds further on. Once that was done, I also needed to remove the inhabitant of the sump tank, our little Tandanus catfish. He's a really placid little fella and it was very easy to catch him in the net 
and then just pop him in the little deck aquaponic system we have on the grow upstairs. Now I didn't want to waste the water that was being held in the sump so I removed the bell from the bell siphons in the grow beds just leaving the standpipes in there so I could flood the beds and I also turned off the exit valve from the fish tank to let the fish tank fill to the upper limits without overflowing. Now the remainder of the water in the sump was then pumped into a large holding tank so it could be added back in later. So once that sump tank was emptied, I replaced it with the small one I'd been using to test the new system. So one of the challenges I have with setting up this sump tank is this ground here isn't level. The old sump tank was actually buried into the ground, uh, which made life a lot easier. Whereas this one here, it's just going to set up on top of some bricks that are basically um, just sitting on top of the dirt. And it's pretty much all going to be sitting there. I'm sort of um, wondering whether I'm even going to bother leveling it too much, mainly because this has a, a deeper, there's a deeper container and will hold more water. And I'm only running one, possibly two flood and drain beds. So this will hold more than enough. One thing I do need to do though is bring it up a certain height because the valve on this end here has a little lump underneath it and that protrudes down further so unless I can possibly take out the pavers where that will be sitting that is an option so after a bit of stuffing around and taking out the wrong pavers I think I got it sorted now excuse buddy there we go yep so that's sitting over a hollow there so the sump tank is in place. Obviously we need to get some water in there and try and keep that bio slime happy. And to do that, what I need to do is fire up the pump again. So to begin with, I will set up the pump. I've got a little waterproof power box down here that that will go into in a tick. I will need to undo this though and run it through the side wall. I'm not sure if I will keep this pump in here or whether I'll grab one of my other ones yet. Whoops, grab the washer. Screw him back up. Uh, this is the drain from the radial flow settler, which we don't really need in at the moment, but I'll just put him there to get him out of the way. This is the extra section from the bio. I'll start flooding some water through. And then up here, all I need to do is just open this, if I remember which way, and that will send a flood of water through down through here. Ended up topping up the sump so there's enough water to run the pump. Main reason being is we want running water in the system, otherwise mosquitoes would lay their eggs and we'd end up with wrigglers in the water. And now I can come down here and plug the pump back in again in the little waterproof box. And turn this valve on of course. And now we're cooking with gas. Just make sure this is all back, sat back up and nice and watertight as well. Now at the moment we've got the fish tank, we have the two filter canisters set up, not the internal workings, they're still up with the other system. We have a sump tank, we have the starting of a dual root zone bed, and as you can probably see, we have a shade house or more a leaf guard over the top of the system at the moment. Now I'll quickly run through the build of this little hoop house first, and then we'll move on to the dual root zone bed. These little hoop houses are very easy to put together. I basically drive in star pickets into the ground or T posts, and then what I do is I drill little holes through this pipe. This is a two inch or 50 mil rural line, by the way, folks. Drill a hole through there that matches up with the holes in the posts themselves, and then run some wire through just to make sure that they don't slip and move. And to join the hoops together, I use what is called a top hat. This is basically something that you connect a gyp rock to when you're framing up a house. Now, these sections here, not all of them were uh, large enough. So what I've had to do is join multiple pieces together and I've just hit them with a couple of, hit them or connected them with a couple of pop rivets. There's a few further down in there. And that basically allows you to um, span a fair distance and they are very strong. You might be able to make out through the shade cloth there that the top hat is connected by some outdoor screws on to the rural pipe and is on there fairly firm. In the past, I have wired these on as well, but I didn't think I had to worry about it this time around. Now the shade cloth I have popped over the hoop house for the time being is a 30% shade cloth. 
I was going to use a VegiNet, which is roughly a 20% shade cloth, but because we're almost near the end of winter here, I figured I might as well put the shade cloth up because yeah, I'd only have to swap it over in about a month or so anyway. We do have a little bit of a join there where some leaves are coming through, but I think I can close that gap up fairly easily. Now up the top here, you can see that I have a different section of shade cloth. Now the reason I have this shade cloth up here is actually to shield the fish tank from the flashing of the backyard lights when they turn on at night, because the jade perch do tend to jump. They've actually had a couple launch themselves out of the tank over the years when people shone torches down the back. So yeah, this is just a little bit of uh, protection just for the jade perch. So that's the hoop house side of things out of the way. Now onto the dual root zone. Now dual root zones, I have had a bit of experience growing with this method before. You can check out the link down in the description after we finish here. Now as for the setup here, you can see that it's on a bit of an angle sloping towards the sump tank. That's because I would like a clean exchange of the water and also too we do have these little ridges in here so I'm trying to bring it up high enough the water up high enough to go over there it's on an old metal frame that is basically being propped up by some cinder blocks or besser bricks uh, just so we can get the height over the uh, top of the sump there what I've done is I've connected the grow bed itself to the star pickets so it won't wobble there's one on the end there and one on the side over there and it just means that this won't slide off if anyone grabs onto it and loses their balance or whatever. I don't think that's gonna be an issue, but I do like to have my beds fastened. I couldn't whack a screw down through the base there, or I could with a rubber washer, but I really don't wanna do that and risk it. So the star pickets and wire is the best way to secure it for the time being, I think. So just to give you a look at the drain fittings, we've got a one inch or 25 millimeter bulkhead fitting or tank adapter and a just a little valve adapter in the end there. That's to basically raise the water level in the grow bed and to stop any media from running down through there and into the sump, I'm just using this stormwater pipe and uh, some holes in it. Uh, the end cap has a hole in it on the bottom and that's just to secure it through the bulkhead fitting and onto the base of the grow bed. And nothing real special here. So to install it is very easy indeed. To begin with, we can get the leaves out of here, undo the bulkhead fitting, pop the base on there. Now underneath that, we will place a washer to create a watertight seal between there. And on this bulkhead fitting, we have another washer to create a watertight seal on the top. Then on the bottom, we've just got the nut and that nut will hold it all in place. Now, if I was really concerned, I could put an O-ring underneath just to make sure it's watertight, but I think we'll be all right. Let's tighten that up. Pretty much all just hand tighten will be more than enough for this fitting here. There we go. Pop the media guard on. And yeah, that bit is right to go. Had a few technical issues this morning, sorry folks. So I'll just talk you through where we're up to. The pump down there, I've made a little bit of a T just using the green stripe rural pipe and I've attached it to the pump using a 316 stainless steel hose clamp and I'm just using barb fittings to join it together and then yeah we have a line out obviously for the fish and we have that line over there that will be going out underneath this grow bed to the inlet over here. I'm just using some old hose left over from an old job. This is just a temporary hose for now so we'll hook it up to the pump and then we'll get on to the underbed drain fittings. So now that's on. The last thing we need to do is fix the drain from the grow bed itself. Make sure it runs through to the sump tank. So this is a little fitting I'm connecting to the base of the bulkhead. It's a little thre threaded 25 mil or one inch elbow, fairly common to get from irrigation and plumbing supplies. And what I'm going to be doing is screwing it in to a 20 mil or three quarter inch uh, fitting and that pipe there will then go over to the sump. I don't need the full 25 mil pipe because this isn't going to have a large flow through it. I'm also not going to worry about a rubber grommet or a seal on this here at all because the water will be flowing down and not backing up around the threads. We shouldn't have any issues whatsoever with it um, leaking out just through that section there. Just spin him around nice and tight though. And then, we can pop on this section here. It, you may also make out that it's sort of pointing uphill at the moment. That's just because there is no weight in the bed. Just quickly with these PVC to poly fitting connections, I find they don't leak. I could put some thread tape on there, but I've also got a load of O-rings, so I'll just come back if there's an issue with that. And then 
You just push this in here, and I know this is a very tight fit because it actually comes from another system, and this didn't leak at all. But again, if I do have problems, all I have to do is come back and make it watertight just using my um, Teflon tape technique. So there we go. That's the drain all sorted for the dual root zone. So we're ready to fire the pump back up, but first of all, I should probably open the valve to the fish tank and come down here and connect the power cords. I need two hands for that though. There we go. Just checking that fitting there, no drips. And we can turn this on. And there we go. That's a load of water. So we're just going to pretty much all give it a dry run. So we'll let that run at full throttle for a little while. Just so the water runs up and covers the outlet there. So that water looks like it's about to start going down that drain fitting. There we go. And we'll give it a little while. Uh, just to see if there's any leaks down the line. So I'm also going to slow this flow rate down as well. Quite considerably. I think all we pretty much will want is something not much more than that. Basically we just want enough water to keep flowing through here continually to keep the pouches moist and the plants well fed. Now because that pipe is actually facing uphill a bit there will be water pooling down the bottom there but it doesn't look like there is any water leaking out and we have a nice flow coming out the other end. So I'm thinking we're pretty right for water seal. I might just zap through a 316 screw though just to make sure that pipe doesn't come out. So now all I have to do is move this clay from here down into the base of that dual root zone bed. So I think we're pretty much well right there. The water level is down about there, about 30-40 mils below the top. Now the media that went into this bed wasn't the cleanest, it was from the grow bed that sat on top of the sump tank up in the old system. I'm not overly concerned about the solids suspended in the water because they generally settle out within 24 hours or so. A lot of it actually returning to the grow beds as these media beds do trap a lot of solids. So now the water's flowing and we have the media in the bed, I will run up and grab the mini capsicums or sweet peppers, some lemongrass and black turmeric to pop into pouches to plan out in the bed. Now what we need to do, oh this is the way I do it anyway, there are different ways to do this. There's a few little bits of organic matter in here, and a few stones, but that's no drama. All I'm doing is adding in probably around about, I don't know, we might go with um, 50 mil or two inches worth of sand in there. There we go, that's pretty much all it. And we'll do that with the other two as well. If you'd like to move, please, bud. So these two larger ones I think will be lemongrass and black turmeric. And this small one here will just be for the uh, little ball, chili or pepper or capsicum, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just going to start putting some soil in the base of them, probably just a bit over a scoop in those large ones. And I'm also going to add some of the veggie mate we like to use. It's basically activated rock minerals, which means the bacteria are there to break down the rock minerals to make the nutrients ready available for the plants. Just mix this in here. I will plant out the black turmeric first. Try and get some of those roots down the bottom there. There we go. Try and work some of that soil in underneath. Just backfill around it like that. Yeah, that should be enough. And we're pretty much well done. So she can go off to one side. And I'm pretty much all going to be potting up the other two the same way, except I'll only be adding in a small section of the lemongrass. I don't need that much, I think. So you might be able to see in the center of the bed, the water table comes up to about 50 mil, 60 mil, well, what's that? Uh, two and a half inch from the clay, which is good, top of the clay. That means there won't be any algae forming on the surface. But what it means for these guys is, put this one in first, is we need to work them down into the clay a little bit. So all I'm doing is just working this backwards and forwards until it's just sitting in the water. And there we go, pretty much well sorted. So I'm just gonna pop this black turmeric one here and hopefully you'll see what I mean. So just working that down a little bit further, I think. And you should be able to see that the water table is just there, just kissing the bottom of the pouch. So there we go. You will find, as it happens with the ginger and the other the potatoes I grew in here, this will uh, 
wick water up on the outside so we will get a little bit of green algae grown there but nothing too dramatic and just finally over the back here because this will grow fairly tall once we thin it down to one we will pop the capsicums so just working it down yep we're just touching the top of the water there and there we go now i have had people tell me that these root pouches don't allow roots to grow through them that is perfectly correct when they are out and exposed to air around the top here they do tend to entangle the roots and um, air prune them, prune them to a degree but from my last grows using these guys i found that both the potatoes and the ginger sent roots out through the base of these pouches and to the point where they actually almost clogged up the drain so something i will be keeping an eye on here and that's why i have this little um, uh, end assembly here so i can actually look down there and see if there's any roots in there on top of here i have placed in a grow bed quick look at this grow bed it is basically the same grow bed that was on top of the sump tank i've wired it on slightly differently meaning i had to um, level it out because the sump tank is on a bit of a uh, backward slope so i just popped a paver in there and she's fair, fairly level and also wired it on nicely so yeah not coming off here at all as for the drain typical bell siphon arrangement it's the same one that was in the bed up the top i just need to pop a standpipe in there i haven't cladded the outside but fingers crossed it won't be here long enough to create an algae issue on there uh, because i'd really like to move very soon as soon as settlement happens yeah that's pretty much where we're up to with that one now the media for this bed here came from the large black bed on a stand up at the old system and of course i did take the plants out to begin with and set them aside so they could be transplanted back into the new system later on now the excess clay that i couldn't fit in the bed was just left to one side so it could go into the bed on the stand once it was moved down here later on and if you do want a couple of pointers on moving grow beds and cleaning media there is a full video available link above and also down in the description that you can check out later so now the small grow bed is full and needs some water so i'm going to grab the water lines from the old system bring them down hook them up to this bed and also replace the temporary line on the dual root zone jobby so folks we're just getting cozy down here under the sump tank and i'm quite lucky in it that this fitting here has enough basically tees there's a tee here that this one hit uh, extra little bit here used to go out to the dual root zone bathtub so it's actually going out to the new dual root zone bed here the riser there um, is the one that went to the sump tank so it's just going oh the bed over the sump tank it's going to the same position and this other one here is the one that went to the large bed which funnily enough that's where it's going to again i just had to disconnect it for the time being to be able to get it through the cage here and hopefully i won't hit the camera on the other side as i feed it through I might spin it around a bit and this will need to be connected to this Y fitting once I feed it through here. So this one's just gonna go through here like so and replace the line that I have or that I put on the other day for the dual root zone bed, which won't go to waste because I always recycle these hoses. Just grab the washer before I lose it and it's as simple as connecting this one onto here so i'm thinking this one's actually going to have to come through here uh, make sure the washer is still in there it certainly is screw him on you should be able to get water flowing into some of these beds today so i better get cracking because the sun's going down uh, this inlet here i stole from the one that went on the other day on the other side i just popped it on here and it's going to sit in the opposite corner this time and it's going to be held in place up the top with a zip tie just loosely to begin with and then what i'm going to do is zip tie the hose down the bottom to the subframe and once that's connected i'll come back and tighten this up i just want to make sure i've got loads of room down there and not pull on this end too much at the, for the time being and this hose here is just going to be held up just to take some of the uh, the weight off it there we go yeah, pretty much all laughing so this one here needs to come up i think i might try and get it to just come up through the back here might be a little bit tricky to do probably should have done it first but we'll see how we go 
Come on, little fella. There we go. Not a problem. So just pull this down a bit, and that should do the trick. Might just turn the water on. There we go. So I've got a flow going in there. And that one there, I'm just going to zip tie back onto here. Like such. So the one last thing I've really got to do today is just to pop a standpipe in here. Work out which one would be best. That one's a bit too tall. This one. Oh, that one's a bit too tall. We might just have to um, take the reducer off. Pop that in there. Just so we can get a nice level of water in here just to keep the clay nice and hydrated and keep all that bacteria alive. Might actually just get a bell to pop over it as well. So there we go, just the one from the other bed. Pop that over the top. So it's bright and early the next morning, folks, and this bed has been flooding and draining all night long. The bell siphon's in there, firing away. And as you can see from down the bottom there, no solids have settled out on the base where that pump had been moved when I plumbed her all up. So there you go, washing the media in the bed works really, really well. So once the grow bed was cleaned out and popped back on its stand down in the new aquaponics area, it was time to install the bell siphon. So if you guys have been following me for any length of time, you know my basic setup. I have a uh, end cap here that holds the shroud in place so no one can pull the shroud out. That's that jobby over there. Simple tank fitting or bulkhead fitting. Put a washer on the inside of the guard cap. Put another washer underneath and that creates a watertight seal and a locking nut underneath. And it's as easy as this, popping this through and throwing the washer on. Now I'm not going to do the washer up uh, all the way at this point in time because I have a threaded elbow I want to put onto this. So we'll do it finger tight, let's we'll say. I have this threaded elbow here that will be going on the tail end of that tank fitting. First off, we need to wrap some thread tape around it just to make sure she's watertight. It does help if you wind the same way as you would wind the fitting on. So that way the tail end doesn't get caught. There we go. Now because I'm spinning this on the same way, it won't undo the thread tape. It will make it nice and tight. And you can see that tail is moving there. So just hop up the top here. Now, because I haven't tightened this nut all the way down, I can get this on as firmly as I like. And even if it's pointing the wrong way, like it is at the moment, I can swing this around and then tighten up that nut underneath it and use my little pliers here just to do that nut up nice and firm so we don't have any leaks. And it helps if you grab the nut, Robert. There we go, I think that'll do it. Yep, nice and tight. And then back on the top side, I can use the marks on the side here to, to correspond with the marks on the end cap, which I didn't show you. Trust me, they're there. I can put this on. And that means that all those holes down the side there will match up nicely, even though this is a little bit dirty. Now I've got to find a cap for this back in a tick. So there we go, there's the end cap straight on the top there and we're right to throw media in normally too just to let you know if this this cap fitting here isn't very tight I will throw a 316 stainless steel th screw through the side here just to secure it but this is an old cantankerous uh, <laughs> shroud and it's not going to come out easy at all plus this cap having bits cut out of the side means it doesn't grip it too tightly so there's no chance of you know someone grabbing onto it trying to pull it off and pulling the shroud out the last thing you want is the shroud out and media going down through the drain work clogging it up that is one huge job to rectify should probably bring you up to speed on the bed itself it has been leveled you can see my janky little supports down the bottom there but it is nice and secure once all that weight's in there it's not going to move and it is also slightly higher this end so any water that runs in will make it down to the other end so now the bell siphon's in, it's time to add in the leftover media and I'm also cleaning out the last remaining grow bed from the old aquaponics system just to top her up all the way to the top. We had an issue with this bed, basically the um, shroud is too short. There's an easy fix for that. You can get these little inspection um, adaptions. Uh, they're a little screw cap. Other people actually put these on their, um, their shrouds, but they're very expensive. 
can pair with an end cap with a few bits cut out, just slide on and off really easy. If you don't have them cut out, they can grab on there. That's why I like to cut them out. Now this just needs to go around there like that. Push on easily and screw that on. And that means I can put the extra clay that I have down around this now. Just a little bit extra just to top up this end of the bed. And we'll have no problems with that going down in there when I unscrew this to check with the bell. So yeah, nice little easy fix. One that didn't cost me a cent. Thank you very much, mate. I know it's only been 30 seconds, but a quick update on this little system. Drill some holes in the top, otherwise it'll act like a giant bell. So there you go, lesson learned. Just started to fire off as I pressed stop on the record. So yeah, I've just gone up and zapped a couple of holes in there. That way, it won't induce a siphon and I can just run it as a constant flood. You live and you learn. The stilling well is in the um, radial flow settler now. It is a 150 millimeter or six inch PVC pipe tube. It has some stainless steel bolts put through the sides and that's what prevents the whole unit from falling all the way down into the radial flow settler. The lid itself is a cap and I've just cut some sections out of it there. So that means it slips on nice and easy because they are a bit of a firm fit. It's doing its thing, uh, so much so that it has collected a lot of the muck that was, oh, you might be able to see the brown down there, a bit hard to see really. It's collected a lot of the muck that was floating around the system from the various grow beds and the muck that was in there. So it's done its job over here in the moving bed bioreactor. We have an air stone, but no media. That media will be coming down after I move the fish over here in the fish tank, it now has a lid. So what we're going to do again, like the one um, up under the deck there, this will be held back to a point. So they always have um, access to sunlight. Not that they really need a lot of it, but they're going to be used to us walking over the top of the tank and not, you know, startle and jump every time we open it. Over the back there, we have just a makeshift inlet. Uh, what I decided to do was drill a hole through the tank wall, just like the other one pop in a uni seal, a section of pipe, a fitting on the outside to connect to the nut and tail style connectors I like. We also moved the electrical cabinet down the bottom here. So now we're getting ready to move the fish from the system up under the deck. But before I add them into the tank, I need to add the venturi from the old tank so they have some oxygenated water as soon as they're added. Now I wasn't going to tape this, but as I listened to my wife, I've as decided as I should, I've decided to tape this uh, just with the Teflon tape. It just helps create a slightly better seal between the PVC, especially if you're running a screw in because that can sometimes, not all the times, but sometimes distort it. Now I'm going to use a bit of brute force here. Oh, by the way, I also changed that um, elbow as well. Wasn't happy with the other one, thought I'd put a new one on. I'm going to use a bit of brute force here. Uh, the angle of this doesn't really matter because I can also twist this um, pipe. I'm going to give this a tap. There we go. Zap through. First of all, put my little scoop underneath. Zap through a hole. And then, a 316 stainless steel screw. So what we're going to do is grab the pump and we'll put that in here now. I just need to undo this. I've actually made up a new one of these sections because this one here was leaking and it was leaking from up the top here as well. So this pump, give it a good clean in there. While we're at it, get everything off the grill. As you can see, I haven't really been doing a lot of pump uptake or upkeep lately. Now what I want to do is remove this um, stainless steel hose clamp here, mainly because yeah, this is just leaking. And I will pop it on the new section I've made. I don't know how easy this is going to come off. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's just a little bit too loose for this. So I'll grab my lead. If you'd like to follow me, Bianca. I can do that. So just taking off everything here from the existing pump and we're going to have that run back into the sump. That's just the, it's created a siphon back from the um, Venturi, no drama. Now this one over the back might be a bit hard for you to see. 
I've used an elbow here and there's no washer in there. It must have fallen off while I was putting it in. Anyway, there's the small little pump that was in there. By any chance, did that pump used to be orange? Yes, it did. <laughs> it used to be orange. Now, this is just a little bit too narrow for the 25 mil pipe. The pink tape would probably be the way to go, but I just thought I'd wrap a lot of this uh, white Teflon around it. Uh, it should be all right in the end, I think. That is a lot, isn't that it? That is a lot. I was going to say, if you've got shares in this stuff. No. <laughs> That's going that way. That's going that way. That's going that way. So pop him on like that. There we go. And again, with this hose clamp down the base where it's the fattest. This is the line that will be going out to the grow beds. Now, just to make things easier, I'm putting an angle on it. Just because I would like um, the pipe, or well, the hose, not to flex too much. And this washer is for the other side because apparently it's missing one. So I'll pop this in here. And that's a lot better. So pop a washer in there. Screw this on to the angle. And the 90 degree angle isn't a huge um, issue with it going out to the beds. I mean, if it was PVC, it'd be four 90 degree angles um, because the beds don't really need that great a flow. And now we have the washer for this one from up here. This is the um, line to the fish tank. Screw him on, nice and tight. It's on tight, everything's on tight. This is the little waterproof box with the pump in it, the pump connection. So that's the old pump. Lead, we'll get rid of that out of the mix. Thanks, babe. And yes, Jack. Hello, Jack. How are you, Jack? Go eat your passion fruit. Go. Jack's got a passion fruit that the possums have knocked off out of the tree. And pop these leads back in. Pop that down. Creates a watertight and vermin tight seal. So this little power selector is just going to go there for now. I think we're ready to turn the pump on. Did I turn it on? Yes, you I did. did. You might. Oh, the water level's dropped. The water level. Won't take long to jump back up. That looks like it's doing a much better job. It's also running at around about 8,000 litres an hour, I think, at the moment. Uh, you will notice there's a couple of drips coming out of the assembly there. I'm not overly concerned about that because they're not going anywhere. They're just going back into the fish tank. So now we have the pump and the Venturi hooked up and we have oxygen supplied to the water. We can get cracking to move the fish. We did a whole video on the fish move, so you can check it out, link down in the description. Might give you a couple of pointers or two if you're ever in the same situation down the line, moving fish from one system to another. So there we go, folks. Don't know how easy it is to see them down the bottom there, but they are all in. Oh yeah, you can see them. And there's water all over the lens. How's that, folks? Better? <laughs> Better? Um, yeah, we're just going to monitor these guys over the next couple of days and see how they go. Just to show you, I have brought the other pump down before we do the biofilter, and I'm just going to pop the air stone in here. Just for the time being, just so the fish have some air. Pop that in there. Even though they've got air through the Venturi, I do like them to have more than one source. It's actually going to come down from the... Um, the top of the hoop house once I get it all sorted out. So the other thing I've done is hooked up the backup air supply in here. It's just got a little relay down the bottom and whatnot. There's a video you can check out on that, shows you how it's made. So to simulate a blackout, turn off the power that keeps that little relay open. That little pump turns on and the fish are now swimming in a spa bath. All that air is coming through there. And those check valves, I'll just turn that back on. And those check valves, where are we? This one here, stops the air coming back through to this compressor. So now we're off to get the fittings and the media from the moving bed bioreactor so we can finish off that part of the job. So to begin with, I need to take out the fittings from the moving bed bioreactor. And the little air stones that are in there. So people have asked me how much biomedia is in here. And to tell you the truth, I forget, I think it's 30 liters. These buckets, I think, are around about 15 litres. It's a bit of a complex um, calculation, but a, a good rule of thumb is basically one litre or one quart of this style of media 
per 500 gram or um, one pound fish. So we're just going to um, put this media straight into the biofilter now. I've actually stuffed up because I've just realized I haven't put the correct inflow yet in here, but we have an outflow. This was the inflow as you saw it before, just pushed on here as an outflow, pop the lid back on, get another load. I can now take this section here out, that the water level is low enough, and this will be our inflow into the other filter. So I'll put it in with this bucket here. So now we're going to put the inlet in. I'm just gonna take that T fitting off and we're going to put this inlet on with a 90 degree because I put these holes right near the top to basically allow as much water as possible in these drums, both of them. And this outlet here being at the top will prevent any siphon from occurring. And that media shouldn't go back to the radial flow settler, but I've seen stranger things happen. So I'll just bring it down close. And I think that's good enough. So there we go. We have the water now entering down through the 90 at the bottom. And then it has to come up through this pack, which I'm yeah not too happy with the way she's going. There's basically, I don't think enough in there, but yeah, it'll do for now for what I want. Or well, one we know once I add the next lot in. Yeah, as you can see, we are having issues. Another thing I can do is have this going straight out. I'll just go look for a fitting. So there we go, folks. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna fine tune it a little bit and probably put another one of them in there. So what I did was spliced in a T fitting, then run two bits of hose down either side of the collector there and popped an air stone on the ends. And that is pretty much well spreading the air further around the drum. So we only have a little bit of um, media stuck around the rim there. And that, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. That you might be able to see the media below that is moving slightly. So I'm not really concerned about just a little bit hanging around the outside. We have a nice boiling um, on the inside. The bacteria has loads of air to help it do its process. And we have a nice exit flow out into the sump tank. And the lid fits on nice and snug. So there we go, folks. There's a bit of a gander at the whole build from setting up the fish tank, sorting out the solid settler, the moving bed biofilter, and also installing the grow beds. As you can see, they have been planted out. A number of the plants were refugees from the old system. We have the warrigal greens there, the lemongrass, and there is also a couple of little sections of the black turmeric. This one here has just got a little shoot on him. And they all went in pretty much all straight away. I did lose a couple of plants just because the siphon wasn't initiating properly here. I basically had too much water coming in and it drained and it wouldn't fill back up again. So I did lose a few while we went away, but yeah, such is. But the rest of the plants are doing really well. The Warrigal Greens went in and had a little bit of what I'm thinking was maybe an iron deficiency. But now just look at them. They're just booming, put on a load of extra growth. We have some refugees from the soil beds that we've removed because we're getting ready to move to our farm and we're just rooting them here in the aquaponics so we can pop them in some pouches and get them up there. They're just basically a little seaside daisy and they have a nice little gorgeous white flower on them. Bit of a favourite for us. The other thing I'm trying to do is strike a vanilla orchid in here. Uh, just see how that goes. It's just a small cutting that came off one that wasn't doing so well. You might also be able to make out that I do have a little bit of a green carpet forming in here and they are some saved lettuce seeds. I decide to do a broad sowing into the bed, mainly so we have some fodder for the guinea pigs um, before we go up to the farm because we've started to mulch the backyard, trying to build up the soil down there. And a lot of the grass they had, we were harvesting from big clumps of grass down the back. Now the dual root zone bed, I am absolutely blown away by the black turmeric. This is the first year in southeast Queensland that we have had a turmeric grow all through winter. In fact, this one's already put up a little green shoot down there. So that's just blown me away. Um, I think basically being in a warm spot in the aquaponics helped up the top, but then potting it into this um, pouch here just gave it that little bit of extra warmth so it could hold on through the last of winter. The lemongrass over the back here has set up new shoots through the centers of the stalk, so it's taken off nicely. And this sweet pepper or ball capsicum 
it's done absolutely fantastic. In fact, we've got a couple of fruits from the flowers that went that were on there, sorry, uh, when we planted this out. And we haven't trimmed it back at all, mainly because we haven't seen any deficiencies. We do have a couple of, well, a volunteer down here. There was a couple of them. I pulled them out and just left one. Just a tomato, I'd say that's a black cherry tomato, just a seed that would have um, stayed from when we had a plant a couple of years ago. And I've also planted out a couple of small um, aloe vera plants because I don't want to take big ones to the farm. I thought I'd just try and strike some down here. And just to show you on this lemongrass, we actually have a nice little green shoot down in there. While we're in this bed, you might be able to see a couple of the small green shoots down there. I found some miscellaneous brassica seeds, so I just scattered them all through this bed. I think they are a bok choy, so we'll just see what happens with them over the next couple of weeks. And if you want to find out what they are, all you need to do is hit that subscribe button, jump on over to the bell, and hopefully YouTube will send you a notification when I do an update video on this system. And we can't leave without saying g'day to the fish. So there's the fish down in there. Uh, maybe a little bit hard to see them. The phone's a bit glary, but yeah, they're all doing well. We've um, had an issue with one passing, but we're not too sure if it got spooked and hit the side of the tank, which has happened before, and they basically drown after they knock themselves out. But yeah, he had no blemishes on him. But yeah, the rest of them are doing absolutely fantastic as far as I can see, and they are starting to hit the feed a little bit better now that we are moving into spring and the water's heating up. And as you can see, I still have that large air brick, as someone called it, down in there. And we also have the Venturi flowing over at the back. So yeah, all in all, pretty happy with the way that the move went. And I'm very happy with the way that this system is configured and is running. And if you uh, want to see it move to yet another location, um, yeah, stay tuned to the channel. So I do hope you've enjoyed what will probably be the longest video ever posted to this channel if you've stuck around this long. And if you have stuck around this long, might as well hit that uh, thumbs up button and say good day in the comments down below. I love chatting to you folks down there. Huge thanks to you folks who have purchased our Backyard Aquaponics Beginner's Guide. It's helping to keep the channel afloat. And don't forget the first five people to use the code FULLBUILD at checkout, get five bucks off. Huge thanks to you folks who are supporting the channel as well through the different membership platforms and also buying bits and pieces through our store. And that's enough for me though. I do hope you're all well and happy and your own aquaponics and gardens are booming and I will catch you next video. Cheers folks and happy growing.